Hi, everyone. Oh, good evening. It's so great to see so many familiar faces. My name is Jenna Griffith, and I am the director of special projects at Achilles. Tonight, we kick off our Achilles Whole Person Health Challenge, a three-month mental health initiative that will focus on resilience, confidence, strength, and energy. We will provide workshops, resources, tools to help you achieve optimal mental health during these challenging times. We are so grateful to have our friend Maris Gephardt with us tonight. Maris, wait, stay low. She is a longtime Achilles volunteer, meditation expert, and founder of Opulent Mindfulness. Maris is going to lead us in a guided meditation tonight and provide us with additional meditations every Monday to help us get through each week. Now, before we get started, can you just give me a show of hands? How many of you have participated in a guided meditation before? Excellent, excellent, okay. As many of you know, scientific studies have shown that meditation could be beneficial in so many ways. Now, how many of you are here because you want to focus on boosting your energy? Me too. Relieving stress? Me too. Improving sleep? Me too. Great. And how about measurable health improvements? Improvements in your health, overall health? Uh -huh. Excellent. Meditation can help alleviate all these challenges if you practice it on a regular basis. Maris, thank you. Thank you again for sharing your meditation expertise with us tonight and opening our mind and hearts to this type of mental exercise. Now, can you tell us a little bit about meditation and your mindfulness, mindfulness journey? How has it helped you overcome your personal obstacles? So Jenna mentioned some really fantastic benefits or at least problems that we have that meditation can help with. And it's highly beneficial in many of those areas and beyond. So if there's anything that we didn't mention tonight as something that you're struggling with, then definitely put that in the chat box and I can speak to that um, as to whether or not meditation is something that can help with that. We, I like to think of it as a panacea for all, but we do know that meditation has its limitations, but there are so, so many things that it can help us with. So thank you, Jenna and Achilles for having me. It's so nice to see some familiar faces out there. Sarah Heller, hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you. Excellent. So real quick, how has meditation helped you overcome your personal obstacles, Maris? Right. So meditation was a way for me to get very close to myself and intimate with what's going on, what I'm feeling. How do I explain it? How do I really validate anything that I'm experiencing in life with interactions with people, the highs and the lows, just the, even the mood swings that I have within myself. And I found that when I practice meditation, it really steadied out the mood swings. It gave me a greater perspective on things and it allowed me to be mindful in a moment to choose a positive outlook. Um, you know, many of us, Maris, have never participated in a guided meditation before, like myself. Can you give us some oh, basic I tips and goals to help us get in the zone and get the maximum benefit from these exercises? Absolutely. So I think there's a misconception out there that meditation is to empty your mind. <laughs> Well, folks, I'm here to tell you, we are designed to be thinking minds. Our brains and our minds take over. We have at least 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. And it would be a full-time job of a team of 10 or 12 to help us stop those thoughts. We don't want to stop the thoughts. And furthermore, those thoughts have great impact. They have inventions. They have motivational considerations in there. They have thoughts about giving and sharing and what makes me human, what makes me tick, what makes me very unique. Um, and we also get messages about our purpose. So it's important to be in tune with those thoughts. And truly, the most important thing, if you learn nothing else from tonight, two things. One, meditation asks how to be more aware. I'm more aware of the birds chirping. I'm more aware of any pain I might be feeling. I'm more aware of my surroundings and maybe the body language I'm reading from you. At the, and the second most important thing about meditation, if you take away nothing tonight, is the central question that is really asked throughout most lineages of meditation. And that is, who am I? Who am I? 
who am I? So we peel and peel and peel away the layers, not what is your birth order, what is your race, what is your sex, what is your job title, what is your bank account? Those aren't the who am I's. The who am I's are, I finally came to the answer for myself after hours and hours and hours upon hours of meditation. Who am I? I am light. So just plant that seed for yourself and you'll discover soon what, what your purpose is and who you are. That's great, Maris. Now, anything else you want to add before we get started with this guided meditation? Well, you can't do it wrong. And it's important to know that we have to practice often. And just like anything, the more we put in, the more we get out. And the practice of becoming still and quiet and silent is very difficult. We are bodies who want to stay in motion. And all of you are very active people, so you get it. Um, but the seated stillness practice of meditation is very different because we stop the additional sensory input from coming on and onboarding into our system, into our cellular structures. So we give ourselves a bit of a holiday from having to process new experiences and interactions and um, engagements with uh, the external world. When we become quiet and still, we start now engaging with the interior world of ourselves. So we become more familiar, more knowledgeable, more um, sharp and vibrant and bright because we are truly tuning into who we are and then we can better share that beautiful gift with the world. Awesome. Okay, so who is, are we all ready to do this? All right. Okay, we ask that everyone who's here right now, please don't use the chat during our meditation time. Again, we're going to do questions and answers after the meditation segment is complete. Um, so no worries about that. Um, all right, well, Maris, also who is known as the great, the powerful wizard of pause, please take it away, my friend. Okay, so I do see one comment in the chat box about um, something we didn't list in uh, one of the benefits of meditation, and that is, what do I do when my job overwhelms and I have no headspace to chill? So this is why we like to start our day with meditation, so we create Space for our own selves and our own thoughts and our own nuances of our mind to have their space, get your attention, and then you put them to bed, let them rest, and they're filed away, and all is all is well and clear. And now when we go to work, we can have better perception about what's happening around us, and we can have a better perception about what's happening within us, so we can dialogue with, I'm feeling frustrated in this moment, I feel like I'm overwhelmed in this moment, I feel like I'm not being treated fairly in this moment. Get intimate with those emotions that you're having with your own self in that experience. And when we acknowledge them, they take less ownership over us and we can file them more quickly away. We're very fit at filing away. I might have to make that another Maricism, <laughs> the fit at filing. Um, and then we can better handle what's coming at us in that moment. So very important to meditate every morning, every day even if it's just for a few moments to tune in, get connected, and then step into the world. And ideally, the more we meditate, we're taking that stream of consciousness into our day, and we're in a very fluid existence with whomever we're interacting, the work we're doing, the projects we're on, and being with ourselves wherever we are. Um, so thank you for bringing up that notion. Um, yeah. All right, so here we are. Come to your comfortable seat, and if you're sitting on the floor, find some support for your spine. And if you're in a chair, scoot your tush to the back seam of the chair so that your spine can be supported and so that the head rests really easily over top of the spine, not resting on the wall or the back of the chair or couch because we don't want to fall asleep. We want to be very alert in our practice, and I know it's late there for you, so... Um, you're probably feeling a little bit fatigued, but this will really help you slide into a nice slumber this evening, too. All right, so let your arms hang heavily down alongside your body. Roll the shoulders back and down, and then, therefore, the heart is shining just a little bit more forward in your chest. Where the elbows are, bend the arms and place your palms now in your lap on your thighs. Now. Tuning in to the inner energy in your own body tonight. Are you feeling very explosive, combustive, high volume energy buzzing around inside? 
place your palms to face up. So we give a gesture of releasing out. If you're feeling fatigued and tired and you need to restore and give more inward attention, place your palms to face down in your lap to give to your own body and self. And note too that practicing meditation, taking care of yourself, not selfish. We need this self to be taken care of. And so if you feel safe, you're welcome to close your eyes. And this will also help to eliminate additional sensory input, right? So we can tune more finely into what's happening on the inside. And let me just start by saying it might get uncomfortable. All right. So just notice if it gets uncomfortable and start having that dialogue with yourself. I'm feeling really fidgety. I feel like I want to move. I want to go. I want to run out of my skin. I want something to fix this discomfort on the inside. Acknowledge it and we'll just wait it out. Usually a moment takes 90 seconds to pass. A discomfort, a thought, um, going down the rabbit hole, dwelling on something, getting caught in a feed, mental feedback loop. Acknowledge Ride it out. It will pass in 90 seconds. All right. So here we are. We're closing the eyes if you feel comfortable. And begin to really drop into the body. And we'll go for about 12 to 15 minutes, which is rather long if it's a new and beginning experience for you. And I'll sound the chime of the symbol to begin. And I will sound it three times to conclude, and then you'll know to re-enter your space. And take a big belly breath in. And a little bit longer, soothing breath out. So doing it again, the inhale is very activating to our system. And the exhale is very calming to our sympathetic nervous system. Ideally, your mouth is closed and we're breathing in through the nose, but we're drawing that breath more aggressively in with the throat. Inhale. Exhale. So you begin to have that Darth Vader type sound. Inhale, drawing in through the throat, nostrils are open. And exhaling through the throat, nostrils are open. And here we go. So begin to rest your eyes heavily in their sockets like bowling balls. Notice a distraction and not react. We still drop into the body, remain present, aware our senses are interpreting information. At the same time, we drop into the body and remain still. Breathing in. And breathing out. And there's a thing called simultaneity of our awareness. So we're sensing what we smell, what we taste and hear and see and feel, all at the same time, but not getting upset or riled up by multiple things happening at the same time, awareness, and stillness. Now you might be thinking, what if I'm in harm's way and I'm just being aware and still, I could be harmed. What happens when we practice the meditation in a safe place we free up our faculties and our awareness and our resources to immediately more quickly get us out of harm's way because we're more present, more heightened, and more aware. So practicing awareness while we're in a safe and still environment.
Now, feel the air upon your skin. Find three words to describe what you're sensing on your skin. Temperatures, clothing, air. Notice what do you taste? Maybe you have some leftover dinner that you're still tasting. Notice what you're tasting in this moment. And as we become more skilled at observing our senses, begin to notice where in your body you hold your pain, your tension, your worries, and your fears. It's a kind of an advanced stage, but I think you can do it. Tune into your body. Where do you feel discomfort? And as you acknowledge the discomfort, also acknowledge how this discomfort has been sending healthy signals to you, keeping you aware and safe. And as you acknowledge the tension, begin to let it melt. Ungrip itself. Breathing into the belly and out down the body, we melt even more. Two more this way. Fill up the belly. Maybe the chest rises. Lift your heart. And release into the body. Exhale. One more time. Use your base, your secure foundation. Press down. Lift your heart. Breathe in. Surrender into warmth, security, breathe out. Feeling the support you have within your own strength and with this beautiful network you have around you to support you. Again, notice the thoughts that are coming up. Maybe you're having a conversation with yourself. Or maybe you're having a conversation with your sister from three days ago. These things happen when we get quiet. It's okay. Acknowledge. And come back to your body. Feel your skin. And notice your breath. You can liken the practice to being in the zone. When you're solely focused, your body is in union with your action and your thoughts and all your faculties are aligned in one forward direction. Very similarly in meditation, you drop in, release, and allow the stillness to be the most important thing we need to worry about right now. 
so very healing for the brain, centers of logic and reasoning and executive function. Rest your brain like you're resting your body at the end of a very challenging workout. Rest your brain. Notice any tingling on your skin. Now notice any muscles you're holding, any expressions you're making on your face. Allow the jaw to relax. Allow the forehead to soften. And allow the tongue to lay in your mouth with ease. Beautiful work, everybody. Three more minutes. Notice if you're getting fidgety. That is normal. Try to stay and drop in one more time. And now bring your two hands to your lower belly. In this moment, call to mind three things that you already have that you are grateful for. These can be people or experiences or actual items. Call to mind three things you're grateful for and dwell in this state of gratitude for 12 seconds. Breathing in, fill up your belly. Exhale, soften. Resting your two hands now over top the heart space. And call to mind, this is a hard one, but I think you can do it. Call to mind three qualities that you love about yourself. Three qualities you love about yourself. And dwell in this space of self-love for 12 seconds. And now gather your two hands to touch. One or two hands, resting your thumbs to the center of your forehead, the mind's eye. And call to mind three qualities of your being that lie deeply within you that make you unique. I am light. Find and discuss within yourself those deeper qualities that make you unique and you and your purpose. And dwell on this beautiful gift that is you for 12 seconds.
And return your hands to your lap, resting your dominant hand nestled in your less dominant hand and your thumb tips touching in your lap. Take a big belly breath in and a longer soothing breath out. And when you feel wet ready, you're welcome to re-enter your space, opening your eyes. Good job, everybody. That was a really long time. Closer to about 17 minutes. <laughs> so. Paris. Wow. I don't know about all of you, but I feel so refreshed and relaxed and calm. Thank you so, so much. I, I'd like to see, you know, if any participants <laughs> want to unmute themselves or talk about how they're feeling right now. If you want to either post in the chat or. And as you guys are unmuting, I'll just talk briefly about resiliency because that is the focus for the month of January. And meditation absolutely does help with resiliency because like being fit. So when you're fit and you climb a set of stairs really fast and your heart rate's high, when you're fit, the heart rate will go back to resting rate very quickly. <sighs> when we are fit with meditation, we can be stressed out about something and be disturbed and bothered and, oh no, this upset me, and quickly get back to, I am centered, I am grounded, I am a good person, my value is worthwhile. So we quickly get back to center. So that resiliency practice in meditation, boom, it's spot on. Great. Okay. We have someone who said they're feeling very relaxed. Yeah. How about if you don't want to speak, at least raise your hand if you're feeling relaxed. If you feel like that meditation had an effect on you, that you're willing to try this and commit to trying this three Three times a week, Maris, right? What are our goals here now that we've done this once to help us integrate this into our, you know, our daily routine? What yeah, are I, you know, our short-term goals? I guess so. I mean, it helped me stay in a, in a happy place, happy thoughts, like, like pushing myself to do exercise and pushing me to do this helps me get in it. So right, ready for Saturday. Sheridan? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. I think I can do it. I think I can do it also before if I feel getting worked up before going to bed, just to sit there and just close my eyes and breathe. You're absolutely right. The idea is in the morning and in the evening. So ideally that, and I wouldn't say start with doing it in the morning and see if that works. Then I'll add the evening because as we know, if we're not getting much benefit out of it, then we might not do it. So if we do the okay. program twice a day, that'll be the good news. So our goal for this week before from now until Monday is to um, meditate for three minutes by just swinging your legs to the edge of the bed or when you're waking up in the morning before you get onto the ground, um, sit there, pause for three minutes, not looking at digital. Okay. <laughs> because we don't want someone else to dictate our mood for the day. We want to be in charge and choosing how we step into the world um, and interact. So three minutes. If you can do it, what's it? tomorrow's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So three minutes, three days in a row, and Monday we're going to deliver you a very special um, meditation track so you can listen to the audio. Does anybody have any questions for Maris? Anything in regards to meditation, mindfulness? She is our guru, our expert today. Now's the opportunity. You can either post something in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. Now is the time to do it. I see a comment from Evelyn about having a tough month and couldn't do meditation on my own. Um, so it's a good idea when you're just starting out to have guidance because our mind can go bananas and you could sit there for half an hour and be like, whoa, okay, I finally recognize I'm, I'm in my meditation, right? So the mind can go. 
And I always know that you I'm have doing, to cheat on, doing a good job with my meditation. You have like to cheat on my and then this. I go read a book <laughs> and I read the paragraph one time and I'm getting it versus, oh, I've read this paragraph three times and I still haven't paid attention to what's going on. So that's an indication there's so much going on in the mind, so much to process. We need to step aside, allow the mind a chance to process all the input we've been experiencing. Maybe some past memories are coming up. This happens to me a lot, especially around the holidays, getting ready to go be around family. I was getting all kinds of past memories. I'm like, oh, I'm processing them now. So when I go, my heart will be warm and available to be around my people. So this same uh, concept or moment can also mirror what you can do in your day too. So yeah, for practicing meditation on your own, definitely go for the guidance to keep you on track, returning to the body, just more reminders. Um, it's a training, it's definitely a training. And can meditation help before a race? Absolutely. So when we have stress in our body, especially if it's a negative stress, worry, fear, anxiety, it's going to make us contract. And when we contract, we're going to not have a lot of blood flow. And all of our energy is going to go to survival to deal with the stress and the emotion and the troubling. When we meditate, we get in touch with that. We free it up. We begin to breathe. We find more expansive nature. We slough off the worries. And now our body is full throttle available to perform. Good question. And thinking of running as a meditation, great point. So I love going for hikes. I love snowshoeing. I love doing yoga. Um, I love cycling, things that are in motion, you know, maybe a chewing meditation or a mindful making the bed or some kind of thing we do in a routine basis. Um, those are, when we do a motion-based mindfulness practice or meditation practice, we're still having a lot of sensory input on boarding. And so we're still having to reconcile and process that in our brain. So I think of the seated stillness meditation as a really great gymnasium for when we are out doing the thing, we are out doing the thing, not also worrying and back and forth in past, you know, thoughts and then future worries. We can just be doing the thing and really get the most out of that thing because our focus is more a priori, single focused. Okay, so great question. We have a call interrupt our meditation that we had this opportunity on this call today. So we have the awareness. Oh, the phone's ringing. All right, I would love to stay connected to my meditation, but I'm going to take my meditative state into my call. Hi, how are you? I'm available. I'm listening. I am giving them space to be heard. And something I also want to point out, there are a lot of studies that show when a person meditates or a group of monks are meditating in a certain neighborhood that might have a lot of crime and it's um, sort of a needs more support in this neighborhood, um, when these monks sat in the house, meditated, their goodness radiated out and people started taking on community projects, planting gardens, the crime level went down, the houses started to become more revived. So when we meditate, we impact the people around us. It's subtle, but it's powerful. Yeah, hard to stay positive. Amen, sister. Um, Okay, so good question, tough question. There's a lot of isolation, sense of loneliness, um, frustration. We can't control the situation. There is a lot of chaos always. And so the best thing you can do is acknowledge that. And we don't always have to be positive. So we have to tune in and honor ourselves when we are feeling a slump and a negative and a down, sad moment. Absolutely honor yourself. And again, with that, it should pass in 90 seconds. And it might come back again in 90 seconds. And we wait it out again. So pausing with the awareness. There's so much in this world we can't control. What we can control is our emotional relationship to the stressor. And it takes time. Don't give up. And one thing I was noticing, too, is... We can truly, maybe it feels artificial at the time, but we can start speaking very positively in our heads to ourselves and choose to speak positively about things to people. Um, it's, 
it's an exercise in and of itself to say, wow, I'm an amazing person. Wow, I did all that. Wow, look at how well I organized my space. Wow, I took on this new project. Wow, I'm no longer gossiping. You know, whatever the thing is, be positive toward yourself. Even if you feel like you're kind of faking it, it will work. It will absolutely work and shift and we can rewire our brain and our neurocircuitry and begin to train much like you do. You're very good at disciplining yourself to do that. We can do it with the brain and the mind as well. Thank you, Zoe. I think we have one more minute. Any more questions or concerns? If anyone wants to email me, please feel free to email me. And it's Maris at Opulent Mindfulness. I think you guys are going to put that on the chat somewhere. Um, it looks like, oh, Jenna oh needs here to I am. There you are. I'm back on. I'm back on. Thank you, Maris, so much. We will put your, we can e put your email in the chat. Great. Can you I tell can me right what, oh, good. Maris is going to put her email and information in the chat. And this will be recorded so you can access it later. Thank you, Maris, for being part of this today. Really, this was so, so informative and helpful. And I feel like just what the doctor ordered for all of us during these times, really, we need to do our best to integrate this into our, our daily routine. And I think that's a good collective goal um, for all of us to, to at least try. We all have a few minutes to take a pause, right? To, to just breathe. Our bodies will thank us, our minds will thank us, our friends and family will thank us for sure. So that is, it's, it's you know, just truly, truly just a helpful practice. And just a reminder, we're going to be sharing Maris's meditations every Monday on our social media channels. So please check it out and you can listen to them as many times as you want. We will also be posting them on our YouTube channels, our website for you to to view and listen to. Uh, in, in addition, there is a free app called Insight Timer, I believe was, what was mentioned maybe earlier. It's the world's largest free meditation app. I know there's a lot of apps there where you can pay $60 a year. Here's a free one, Insight Timer. Maris even has several of her own meditation tracks on that. Insight Timer, I believe Janet's gonna put that in the, in the um, chat as well. Uh, we hope, again, you have found this workshop helpful like I have. And don't forget, save the date. Our next event is Thursday, January 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have a rockin' resilience dance party. Shake all of our, all of our yes! stress away and show our strength. And just remember to breathe, folks. We are more resilient and stronger than we think. So go Achilles. Achilles strong. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.